Joining me now is former UFC welterweight and uh, recently retired UFC fighter, I should say, uh, Glory MMA head coach James Krausman. Um, how's how's it going, man? It's been an interesting week for you, I'm sure. You're getting a lot of messages, a lot of attention since your interview on Monday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it's great. Obviously, just receiving the love and uh, you know, just I don't know, man. Just, it's it's a lot. Anybody that's been doing this uh, sport for a long time. It's a lot of sacrifice, you know, and I guess it's just nice to know that it's, uh, you know, not for nothing, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's been a wild week. You get your first champion, then kind of the attention, you know, is on the gym. It's on you. It seems like uh, maybe a mix of emotions. Was there a certain, like, sort of release that comes with kind of getting that off your chest finally and saying it publicly? Uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, you always, like, as a fighter, you kind of always want to hang on to that. You know what I mean? I think it's really difficult to, to quit the sport, and uh, I think you always – you always want to hang on to that a little bit, but it's just time, man. There's no reason for me to, you know, continue, continue fighting. So, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't feel any different, you know, matter of fact, I, uh, they asked me, you saw it, asked me the day that they heard, they asked me if I wanted to pull out of the testing pool. I was like, nah, let me sleep on it just to make sure. Woke up the next day and, uh, I met to, I met to, uh, close it out with you saw it too, but I didn't. So I ended up doing it yesterday, but, uh, man, I don't feel any different. I'm happy with the decision. I'm happy with what I've done uh uh, this is obviously it's a clear-cut transition for me to to coaching full-time now which i've been doing for a long time anyway yeah and obviously that's uh seems like we've heard a lot of fighters say before like oh i'm gonna be retired and the next it's always the joke right mma retirements last like six months um but you get now the usada pool obviously that that kind of puts a a stamp on it um do you feel like that coaching like has allowed you to come to terms with that decision whereas maybe if you weren't a coach like it would be harder to kind of walk away like that one thousand percent. Um, I still, I still get all the things I did as a fighter, man. I get to make the walk. I get the, uh, you know, I, I, I get to be around the industry. I'm in the industry every week. I'm in Vegas right now. I just, I'm sitting on a shuttle outside of the PI. Like on Saturday night, I'm gonna make the walk. Next Saturday, I'm gonna make the walk. I'm still a part of these big fights. I still get the jitters. I'm still deeply entrenched in the sport that I love, that I fell in love with 15, 16 years ago. Uh, so yeah, man, it's, it's, it's been a smooth transition for me. It's been no no problem at all for me to be honest with you, just because. And I think that's why, you know, I still I still get those same those same you know drugs that you know or whatever you want to call it that the fighters get, you know. And uh, I still get those, so that's that's great, man. That's that's one thing that I I will uh, I don't I don't take lightly, and it's uh, I'm very fortunate to still have. Yeah, it's amazing, man. Obviously, everybody that we talk to sings your privileges. Uh, excuse me, uh, sings your you know that you're one of the best coaches in the game. So. Um, obviously a great choice there. How, how are you feeling at this point physically? You know what I mean? Like maybe when you're a fighter and you've been around, you don't want to talk about all these injuries you've had, but yeah. is it, is it something where you walked away from this sport relatively unscathed or is it, uh, you still kind of dealing with any sort of long-term stuff? The last few years have been pretty tough. I got to be honest. Uh, like the last three or four years physically have been fairly tough. Like right now I'm dealing with this herniated disc I have in my neck. That's that's uh it's really bothering me but uh i'll be honest man i feel like for somebody that's been in the game for 15 or 16 years i feel like i'm on the you know, as far as my brain is concerned like i feel you know i didn't take a lot of damage man that's one thing i can i can say and that's i preach that a ton is like i didn't get hit a lot you know what I, mean? I didn't get hit a lot i didn't get hit clean hardly at all uh and i had a lot of fights so as far as like the the wear and tear of like your brain and stuff i don't feel like that's been much on me at all now the wear and tear on my body, you know, I definitely feel it for sure. Uh, you know, I've had injuries and, and such, uh, herniated disc, you know, I tore my hamstring a few years ago, broke my hand numerous times. Like, and I feel all that, you know, but I would like to say, you know, overall, I'm, I'm not terrible, you know, the, the, this disc in my neck is getting pretty bad. But other than that, like it's, you know, that's new actually. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm fairly unscathed, I think. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. I guess when you when you kind of uh, reflect a little bit on your career, is there something that you're most proud of uh, in terms of your competitive career? Maybe that stands out above the rest was the Trevin Giles moment. I think that's when people think of James Cross, the fighter, that sort of mentality is what they're going to think of. But for you, what what is it? Um, I mean, as far as like fight selection goes, like my, my proudest moment would just be my fight with Sam Stout. And that's just because it was, you know, my entry into the UFC and double bonus that night changed my life forever, you know? And uh, so that was, that was a really important night for me. Uh, the, the Worley Alves fight was really important for me. It's because my first fight, at, uh, my first real fight at 70 in the UFC and you know, I was a four to one underdog, uh, you know, so I just proven a lot of people, proven a lot of things myself. But I think, I think, 
you asked me like, what do I want to be most known for? <clears throat> or, you know, what am I most proud for being known for? I, th I think it's, it goes along with the Giles fight. And that's, that's like, uh, I wasn't afraid to put myself out there. You know, I wasn't afraid to try new things and take risks and, uh, and grow, use the sport to grow on, on as a person and as a fighter. You know, I just, I, I, I always want to put myself out there and challenge myself. It was, it was more than a sport to me. You know what I mean? It was like my, it was my life. And like, uh, I feel like a lot of people nowadays, especially a lot of younger kids, they don't want to challenge themselves and take risks. And I feel like I did that properly, you know, and, and I did that in a decent, a decent way, not fucking my career of doing it, you know, but taking the right risks at the right time. No doubt, man. And obviously, uh, you, you know, looking towards the future, looking towards the, uh, the coaching career, I guess, what do you think it is about you? We, we see a lot of uh, coaches, maybe they're older, they're guys that have already retired. Why, why were you able to do this simultaneously? Do you think there's some sort of certain trait or mentality you have maybe that that's made you be able to kind of assume that role? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I, I, I would like to say that I have a certain level of obsession over the sport. Uh, I'm, I mean, I watch all the fights. I. I, I watch just about every single fight, every organization, uh, fight pass stuff, even locally in Kansas city. I watch most of the stuff. Uh, I'm just, I, I love the sport, man. I love the sport. I love everything about it. Most of everything about it. Uh, I'm, I'm deeply entrenched in it, you know, and I, I, I pay attention to it. It's my life. It, it, everything that I have to do in my life pretty much has to do with MMA. So, uh, I think that's, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I was, I mean, you know, you say you're, I'm the only one to be able to fight and coach at the same time. I mean, I don't think there's very many people that are ever even tried, you know? So <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing anything. I don't know if I'm doing anything special and I just don't think anybody else has done it. You know, it's, it's not because I can't do it. It's just because I haven't tried to do it. So I'm not sure, man. I don't, I don't know if I have the answer to that question. You might have to ask some of the guys that I coach or some of the people around me or whatever, but uh, I, I just think I obsess over it and uh, it's a big part of my life. How did it feel to get your uh, your first championship, man, as a coach? It is a special moment for not just for for myself, but for my team. Uh, you know, it, it was it, it was great. It was it really was great. And I've said this in every single interview that I've done. I I understand what I inherited in Brandon Moreno. He was already a world champion before he came to me, and I, I inherited a world champion fighter. But I do believe that myself and my team and, and Brandon's team made a lot of changes and improved him quite a bit and i feel like i feel like we were able to see that on saturday yeah and i guess uh talk to me about that because i think a lot of people might see it like oh you know brandon moreno is such a high level fighter right so you guys kind of brought in a guy but was there any sort of difficulties that come with that like is there anything you kind of had to have him unlearn or something you know that maybe he's just done so many times that you're like man you got to do it a little differently now is, is that a, is that difficult you think for a fighter and, and a coach as well um, it can be difficult for a fighter, uh, but yeah, he had, a, he had a two or three major deficiencies that we really had to work on hard. And we spent the last six months getting over them, and we knew we knew that Kai and his team was going to key in on them, and and they sure tried, you know. And I, I do feel like uh, I do feel like for the first time you're seeing Brandon Moreno use his, his IQ. He's a very smart individual, and I feel like he's relying less on his heart and more on his brain. You know, it's nice to have that ace in the back pocket, obviously, with with your with that dog. You know, you being a dog and stuff. But uh, I, I just feel like we saw. I feel I do feel like we saw an improved Brandon Moreno. You know, that obviously I I leave that up to you guys. You, you know, you guys are the one that that uh, speak on that. But once again, I know I inherited a championship level fighter already. But I do feel like that I was able to make uh, myself and my team were able to make very good adjustments and, and improvements to his game. I think he'll tell you that. And I think anybody watching will be able to tell you that, you know, but I'll leave that up to you guys to determine whether that's true or not. Yeah. And the, obviously, you know, you guys go through everything. You look through every scenario, you practice everything, but how much was the body kick something that you guys saw as an option? Was that going into it? Did you feel like that he left openings for that? It was huge. We worked on it for six months straight. Ask anybody inside that camp. It was something very, very, we went, we went up high for the first two rounds, and then after that, we started going to the body, and he landed three of those in that round. That last one just happened to get through better than the first two, and uh, that was something you could ask anybody inside my in, inside of his his team, the camp, or whatever. That was something that we keyed on very, very early. And earlier, I you know I mentioned specifically. I said you know what was the, what were you most proud of as a competitor, but as a uh, just as a, a professional sort of speak of, of either coaching or fighting i mean was that the highest high that you felt in, in your career right up there uh 
Yes, as as far as like coaching accomplishment, it's definitely ob- it's obviously the biggest thing I've ever had. But like, I don't really look at it like that. You know, if you ask me, like as you were asking me that question, I had so many memories popping through my head, and I don't really look at it as like a. I don't look at it as my. It's not my thing. It's their thing, and I'm a part of their thing, and their journey or whatever terminology you want to put on it. So for me, it's not about as a coach, what have I done? It's about these moments that I've had impactful moments on this person's life, this person's life, this person's life, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, I, I get all these, it's almost like my, all my guys, I have my favorite moment with that individual, you know what I mean? So uh, as, as far as accomplishment goes though, obviously it's, it's hard to beat a world title. You know, that's, that's the goal. That was a goal of mine. So uh, yeah, I mean, that was an amazing, amazing moment, but I also have many other, amazing moments that are right up there with that, you know, and I, and I mean that, you know, world titles amazing, but uh, I've done some pretty cool stuff with some pretty cool individuals and they all mean the same to me, man. They all, you know, it's uh, like some of these guys aren't supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. You know what I mean? Like if you can be a part of somebody changing their life for the better, that's gold in itself. Yeah. And maybe that's the answer to the, the answer you were searching for before about why, you know, people have gravitated towards you. I think that's a, that's a pretty cool mindset, man. Um, this, this Figueredo fight, we've seen it three times before. As a coach, is that helpful or is it is it uh, difficult? Like, do you, do you rely too much on things that are going to be exactly the same and then it turns out they're not? No, I think it's going to be helpful. Um, I think it's going to be helpful. I'm sure we'll see some differences. You know, I, I'm i guessing uh, Figgy's going to go to a different camp. That's what I'm hearing. I, I personally think that's a mistake because I thought uh, Fight Ready did an incredible job getting him prepared for their last fight. Uh but, you know, anytime, the more information, the better. And I just think a lot of these people don't want to sift through it. I'm willing to sift through it. I'm willing to spend hundreds of hours behind a computer screen trying to find the smallest detail that could possibly set us apart. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, any, the more the more information I have to do that, the better for me. Yeah, and if you're going to sit behind a computer screen and watch, you know, the same fights 100 times or 100 hours, like you just said, not not a bad one to have to watch, man. That's a... Uh, that's a great, obviously a great trilogy going to be a uh, tetralogy. I think they call it. I gotta, I gotta look that up again, but um, what else is coming up for the gym, man? Let's, let's close with this. Uh, anybody that people should be keeping an eye out for uh, whether it's um, UFC or, or some prospects maybe coming up that people haven't heard of. Man, we have a lot of, we have a lot of good guys. Uh, we have Jason with this week. David Onama is next week. He's the killer. I have a kid named uh, Isaac Dolgarian. That's in the UFC. He hasn't made his debut yet. That kid's a problem. I have a kid outside of the UFC right now that's been on Fight Pass quite a few times. His name is Gage Young. He's a problem. Uh, we do. We have a good stable of guys, man. We have we have some really really good guys. You know, and then of course we have we have probably 20 plus guys in the UFC total. So we have the vets that've been around for a minute too. So uh, those are just like some of the younger prospects that I, that come to mind. But we have a good team, man. We really do. And uh, nobody moves to Kansas City for the weather. So it's <laughs> there's good there's good barbecue and and a, and a decent MMA gym there. So. Uh, you know, we, we try to we try to keep pumping out some talent, and uh, it's been working well for us so far. Yeah, no doubt, man. And just one more, actually, you just got me thinking. Those names you just rattled off; those are all guys that are that have fought for FAC. Are you are you involved with them a little bit, right? FAC? Yeah, yeah. Is that your promotion? Yeah, yeah. That's my show. Yep. Yeah, yeah. How do you like that? I mean, you're you're just like doing everything at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to act like I do all the work because that's not true, but uh, I have, we have an awesome team. Man. We have a really good team. Uh, it's amazing. I love it. It's a great feeder program. It's, it's literally five minutes from my house, 15 minutes from my gym. Uh, we've, we've produced every, every single featherweight champion that we've had with the last championship has gone off to the UFC. Uh, we've had quite a few, I think we've already pumped out, you know, it's a new promotion. We've already pumped out, you know, five or 10 UFC guys in a little short amount of time. So it's pretty cool, man. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome to be a part of it. It's awesome to get to cultivate. You know, that's one thing we're really big on is cultivating young talent to move on to the UFC. That's, that's what we want to do. So it's great to be a part of that, you know, and it's great to have our promotion on fight pass. Uh, fight pass has been a huge platform for us and uh, they're only growing my podcast is on fight pass now. So it's pretty cool, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have, you know, all these, all these things uh, coming to me and I can't, I can't, I could not be more thankful. For yeah, it's great. And I recommend everybody checks it out. That's not just me blowing smoke either. You know, I, I work for Tapology. We go through a lot of fights and uh, that's, that's as fine as any like regional promotion that you can find. So uh, congrats on a great career. Congrats on a uh, championship. Congrats on promoting, man. Um, just good luck with everything, I guess, James. Thanks for the time, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it.